Hello and welcome to this edition of uh, the Money Show where uh, I am outside the studio obviously as you can see and uh, I'm at Lal Goswal's office and today we are going to talk about only passives and the person I'm going to have this conversation is with uh, is, is someone you've been following maybe as far as your passive investments are concerned or at least taking his tips and tricks to you know implement in your portfolio. I'm talking about Pratik Goswal uh, from Goswal and obviously head of passive investments. Thank you so much for taking time out and joining me for this. And uh, although I will be talking about uh, uh, passive investment and the, the way the trend is catching up in India, but before that, let's just talk about a, a market overview from you. I just want to know how is the Josh? Josh is uh, very strong, to be honest. I think uh, it's been uh, uh, surprisingly strong for a very long time now. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, think it's still it'll go strong. So I think uh, it doesn't, doesn't seem like ending also. I don't think it's looking at ending. Uh, I think we had a bit of a setback in February or March. Right. Uh, but I think markets have recovered then. Totally. And I think what's good about the Josh market is that it's not only Josh, mm. it's also underlying companies also doing very well. Okay. So as we know, markets over the long term mm. trend towards the profitability of the underlying companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen is that even though there's been a lot of in the market, people mm -hmm. have made a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, you know, companies themselves have also done very well. True. So because companies have done well, valuations are still not crazy. Okay. So I think people are looking to enter the market or looking to invest. Uh, this is so great time. So valuations are not crazy across market caps you're talking about. Yes. Specifically mid cap and small, what do you think? I think I think large caps are um, obviously not um, are actually below term okay. valuations. Okay. And uh, mid and small cap is still not uh, there are slightly higher than long term averages. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that they're, they're in the danger category where you should be avoiding or you know switching your portfolio from small and caps to large caps. Okay. So that's very important. The second not thing, even reshuffling and rebalancing something that should be I done. Think, I think if you are looking at an allocation towards small and mid caps mm -hmm. If you're saying my allocation is 40% and that's 40% has gone to 50%, okay. it's very important to rebalance it back to 40%. Okay. But I do feel that uh, in terms of finding value, I think there is a little bit more value in large caps at the moment right. than mid small caps. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I think also the risk levels of small caps have changed over the years. Okay. You can't attribute the same level of risk to small caps that you did five or ten years ago. Right. You know, five years ago, a small cap company in India mm -hmm. was have, had a market cap of about four and a half, five. Crores. Mm -hmm. Today, an average small cap company in India is 25, 30,000 crore. Mm -hmm. it's increased almost four to five times. Right. So these companies are now very stable balance sheets, stable uh, profit and loss. Uh, you know, very good business operations, good governance. So I do feel that uh, small and mid caps offer a lot more stability mm -hmm. than they did say five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Which I think they're a lot more investable today mm -hmm. than they were before. Mm -hmm. So would you also recommend our viewers or uh, your investors to maybe analyze their risk? You know when we talk about having their exposure in mid cap and small cap like how you said that just rebalance it yeah. depending on the exposure in your portfolio but do you also think time to maybe modify your appetite towards this particular category especially when you say that you know the, the risk is still not very high and the yes. certain pockets yeah. are still very attractive i do think so you know i think the portfolio should today should go beyond the large caps okay and the reason why i say right. because yeah. large caps in india say the nifty 50 for example hmm. uh, in the 1990s when it was formed, it was a very large part of the market. It yeah. constitutes all of the large cap stocks. Huh. Today, the top 100 uh, stocks are large caps. And tomorrow, maybe the top, I mean, it, it, the breadth of the market has increased in such a point where if you're playing the large cap space, you're playing a very small part of the market. Right. So I do feel that, uh, and we feel a lot of investment opportunities are happening in mid caps and small caps. Obviously, small caps are high risky, but I do feel that an average mid cap stock today is 75, maybe 60 exactly. to 70,000. Yeah. They're behaving like large caps as of yesterday's. Uh, so I think it's important that investors also keep that in mind, and yeah. maybe it makes sense to you know add uh, a slightly higher mid cap quotient mm. uh, if you are risk averse today right, because right. of the opportunities in that space. Right. How much of this interest are you seeing coming in from passive investment in uh, mid cap and small cap specifically? Caps. Yeah. So you know when it comes to passive funds, uh, a lot of the action happens in the large caps, specifically right. Nifty 50 and Sensex. Right. Uh, if you look at the overall flows in the market, mm. about 80 to 90 percent of the flows happens only in Nifty and Sensex, mm. and this is purely because of the pension funds. Mm. So about 80 percent of all flows into passives happen towards uh, you know EPFO, pension funds, institutions, family offices, mm. and they tend to switch to Nifty 50 and Sensex. Okay. So I think uh, yes, flows are disproportionate towards the mid. Uh, so mid and small cap is still growing at a very fast rate. True. But in comparison, it's still very small. So talking about having passive funds. For mid cap and small cap, do you think it's the right strategy and why this kind of a strategy? Not to 
you but a lot of other amcs also and suddenly there's there's, there's a lot of invest interest coming in for passive investment and specifically we saw that coming in a lot for large and large cap but then suddenly we see mid cap small cap micro cap also coming in you also have a fund right so uh, the universe is actually very large but if you talk about the, these market caps yeah. you know we have to really uh, uh, trust uh, the expertise of the fund manager yeah. okay yeah. and that is what we earn out of you know, in terms of profit as well yeah. but when you talk about having a passive strategy for these market caps how do you generate alpha and how do you beat the expert fund manager or that's not the logic over here at all yeah so the logic is to keep it simple keep it is simple to, you know yeah. track the yeah. index you know yeah. i think the ability to really pick and choose the right fund sure. um, is is a lot more complicated than it than it is because you have so many options yeah i think the reason why passives work um, across different categories is because it makes life simple yeah. you are essentially exactly. buying the benchmark you don't mm. have to worry about the performance poor performance you if you want to invest in a mutual fund over a 30 years mm -hmm. you know which mutual fund are you going to choose you know passive funds selection a lot easier mm -hmm. what we've also seen is that over the last 5 years is that lots of passive funds are now almost on par with actively managed funds especially mid and small caps as well so i think there you know people are not really missing out on a lot so i think simplicity is one big is it reason. also because of the market movement right now that we are witnessing or even in the no, market we've seen this a, kind of it, performance it, in general you know what happens is if you look at the us uh, you know their passive funds are actually doing better than actively managed funds yeah. because the market very efficient yeah. in india so the market is developed over there very developed very efficient in the opposite on that way so there's a lot of ton of opportunity to generate alpha no doubt mm -hmm. but when it comes to passive funds it's really simple it's mm -hmm. very simple mm -hmm. that's one it's also low cost a lot of True. there's a lot of interest in funds which are lower cost because the moment you have low cost funds more of your money is invested in the underlying stocks yeah so basically you can really you know play a much bigger part into your existing stock portfolio mm -hmm. so i think there's a lot of interest that's happening in people wanting to buy low cost and third is again as i said you know i think performance if you look at any other if it cap or even a small cap passive fund i would say they're in the top 5 top funds um, you know overall i think it, performance is also pretty good so i think right. it is and, and most importantly there's a lot more awareness about passive funds than they were exactly yeah true and i think true. no one really knew that passive funds were beyond nifty and sensex those yeah. were the only sort of two in fact when people say passive yeah, yeah. they say nifty and sensex yeah. but actually there's a whole host of passive funds so 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 we have across classes and yeah, you talk you about have, equity you have equities you have fixed income debt you have commodities you have uh, you know sectors bank index it index uh, healthcare index you have factor funds yeah. there are strategy funds where yeah. you can buy into strategies like quality growth momentum so there's you know hundreds maybe i think 250 passive funds today in india and there two the etfs and index funds exactly. so people can really choose what they But would that's like. also making complicated no it's it's i think i do i, I don't disagree with that to be honest. I think it is uh, it, the choices have made investment a lot more complicated. Yeah. But uh, you know, my belief is that most people should stick to the simple funds. As a as a AMC, we have to cater to a large amount of customers. You know, we have retailers, we have H&I investors, we have institutions, family offices. Yeah. So we really need to think about all our customers. And unfortunately, we can't target certain certain funds and customers. It's open ended. Exactly. Huh. So I think we will continue to launch funds based okay. on demand coming in from our from our investor base. Mm -hmm. But for most investors. sticking to a very simple nifty 500 yeah. or a mid cap small cap is something which we believe is the best way in order for you to really select the right fund right for portfolio fund. so you you spoke about launching funds there's a digit figure i think that's coming up in next two years as far as launching passive funds are yes. concerned yes. so what is it all about you will be talking about it a lot more yeah <laughs> days but then just to give us an idea yeah so i think we currently have a uh, 33 to 35 funds passive is that funds. the highest number of funds you have the entire industry passive i think so passive? i think so okay. uh, i can't confirm but i think we would should have this number of funds across etfs index funds uh and we're looking to maybe double that over the next 2 or 3 years wow. time okay so that's that's a plan yeah. in action so but i i i do believe that um, the idea is to really cater to all our our customers right. segments right. Know, we have you know, maybe a million plus customers uh, who are investing in our funds we have a lot of uh, this is just retail number that you're giving me or retail is is, is a This is, include, this. this is including everything okay. Uh, okay. etfs index funds yeah. including everything. so okay. it's a good customer base and we keep on getting demands from them okay. so the idea, and the idea is for an amc is to not really promote all 50 funds exactly but yeah. it's to really talk about a few funds and yeah. if there is demand for any other funds then yeah. they can use this to invest what uh, made you come up with the micro cap micro cap uh, fund of fund if i'm not wrong no it's an index fund it's an index fund sorry okay so uh, why that idea looking at the market trend or you thought there is an appetite 
that kind of a risk among investors because the idea is really great but then you know, we also have to do so risk management for viewers you think you're ready for it most investors are not to be honest micro caps are um, very um, i would say they're very small i mean honestly i think people tend to misunderstand micro caps also okay people think of it's micro caps much risk and you will lose all of all of your money so yeah. so, so the limitations are actually Lot, Pratik. If we, yeah. you know, there is no research, there is no company clarity. Yes. I mean, what a lot of people analysts also face, which yeah. is we see a lot of them not covering a lot of companies as well. Yeah. So, how are you going about it? Yeah, so it's it? an index fund, so it doesn't yeah. really matter how, there, many, exactly. how many analysts there are, there's any coverage. Yeah. In fact, the only way to pay micro caps today is to an index fund. There's no True. other route because yeah. there is no material on how these companies are, what they're doing, what their performance is like, what their sure. businesses are like. So, I think micro cap is can be played through an index fund. Um, it um you know we were the first ones in india to launch you know mid cap small cap multi cap you know sector funds in the index fund space 5 years ago and uh, we, we believe that you know micro caps are big enough for us to launch a fund into it right uh, we believe that a lot, lot of investors today are looking at micro caps as a way of wealth creation right and it has done well to be honest it's okay. beaten everything else. but i also okay. think that it's comes out a lot more risk and yeah. volatility so the aim yeah okay yeah so i think investors need to uh, be aware of their risk profile before in micro caps true true uh, however you know you know i do think that the largest they're still quite large so the average micro cap company will be about 3 and a half crore market mm -hmm. cap mm -hmm. so they're not really like very very small companies mm -hmm. they're decently sized mm -hmm. and i would say that uh, a lot of our investors are using sips as a way to invest true. which i think is a good way of creating wealth in that category because okay. it's very volatile the only way to really build wealth is to mm -hmm. you know do it slowly mm -hmm. so passive sip book if i just want a number from you an approximate number from coming in from investor specifically you know maybe in last two or one and a half how much has it grown for you and which categories because you have passive funds across categories index and etf yes. so what is doing well what's the kind of number in sip book that you're seeing yeah so you know honestly uh, you know, we were unfortunate two years ago yeah. when uh, we had to really shut our international funds yeah. so you know at some point we had about two and a half lakh sips coming into our international funds only mm -hmm. you know and uh, we had to literally overnight stop those flows uh, now they're on again uh, but a lot of flows we've lost over the years yeah. so i would say that you know sip numbers um, you know compared to where it was 2 years ago is actually less today mm -hmm. which is which is funny because a lot of the flows came to internationals where you know we are number 1 yeah. uh, but i still feel it's a very healthy group. you know we have yeah. uh, you know good i think uh, i wouldn't be but at least uh, you know more than um, you know 1 lakh sip is coming in mm -hmm. in a lot of our domestic funds at least so it's pretty healthy mm -hmm. i would that when it comes to passive funds, uh, you know, SIP is not the dominant pay of everything. Most yeah. people tend to use lump sums. A lot, yeah. lot of people tend to want to use passives as a tactical way of you know, playing the indexes. How can uh, you do that? Just in so case I think if someone has a you know bullish call on small caps for the next three months, they can just buy a small cap index fund and they can sell it after three months. Mm -hmm. So tactical has also improved a so lot. So that's very interesting. Uh, and also a lot of uh, coming from family offices institutions. Mm -hmm. So I think if you look globally, mm -hmm. uh, even the 60 to 70 percent of all the passive funds are actually bought by a lot of institutions and family offices, yeah. uh, which is so, which will probably happen in India over the next 10 years. So those will be a dominant sort of AUM uh, force in India when it comes to passive. So I think most of the AUM will be with them. So talking about international exposure and a lot uh, is to be done. I mean, you, you know, all the AMC are talking to regulator, uh, going back and forth, even with the RBI. But uh, right now, if someone is listening to you, watching this show, and want to really plan their international investment exposure in the portfolio yeah. what's the right way according to you to yeah so i think there's still some funds open for sips and sure. sums yeah. so you could look at uh, investing through mutual funds as well mm -hmm. uh, there's two options mutual, mutual funds or lrs lrs, uh, true. LRS obviously the limit bonds. comes yeah. you have a limit but for most retail investors the limit is big enough for them to invest um, i think lrs comes with a lot of hidden costs which investors do some uh, due diligence on sure. uh, the cost of you know remitting money and Getting back to your bank account, it's a bit cumbersome. There's more paperwork. There's a TCS that to pay for it. So I think um, uh, mutual funds is much simpler. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, mutual funds, most mutual funds are now shut. Yeah. There are a few of them still open. So I yeah. think you can look at them for the international uh, diversification. We are hopeful as an industry. We've been lobbying very hard uh, to ensure that these limits open up. Um, may not be big limits, but whatever limits there are, I think uh, retail investors will will really benefit uh, because most investors across the world. Any geography have some of the money outside of the home country, sure. so it's important for us to also have some of our portfolio outside. And to be honest, 
mutual funds investing overseas, the money will come back eventually, right? True. Because it's going to sell at some point. Very important so aspect. I think of it's uh, it's going to come back to us. Yeah. Get <laughs> a larger amount. So yeah. I think uh, overall, it's uh, mutual funds. To be honest, sir. Uh, more transparent, mm. uh, low cost, and also I think overall it's good for us because over the long term we can see some coming back. True. I've gone beyond the time limit for this interaction and I still have a lot of questions for please, you. Please, please. I have to wrap this okay. discussion up. Uh, uh, before we do that, one passive investment mantra to our viewers directly into their camera. I think when it comes to passive funds, um, this is to all the viewers, please keep it very simple. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, there's ETF index funds. I would say between ETFs and index funds, keep it very simple. Do whatever you think is convenient. Don't overthink it. When it comes to passive funds, we, um, I think most people would recommend keeping some the basics in your portfolio. You know, don't, don't go too crazy with sectoral funds or whatever it is. Um, that's what my recommendation is. Keep it simple. And for someone who wants to begin their journey of investment, a passive fund can be good? Yes, that absolutely. Be the first, absolutely. first fund ever? I think it's the simplest fund. Yes, I think a passive can be a good start to start your investing process. Yeah. Uh, we always tell investors the uh, you should begin as early as possible. True, because that's it. happens to compounding, yeah. and to compounding to happen, you have to invest very early. So I think to all investors, please invest as early as possible, uh, because you have to give your investments 10, 15, 20 years sure. for them to really create wealth. Sure, sure. Diversify your portfolio and be disciplined in your investment approach, along with what he's. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. Lovely talking to you. Thank you for having me. Thank and uh, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.